Hi guys, welcome to today's video. My name is Ben Taylor, and today this is for the photography you don't yet know, and if you do know it already, then it's just a recap. Now today's video is all about six tips of photography that are gonna make you smile. Why not have fun while you're learning, right? Now before we jump into today's tips, it would mean a lot to me if you could please hit the subscribe button, and more importantly, in fact, most importantly, click the bell because without hitting that bell you're not going to be first in line for the new videos coming your way okay so let's jump right into it tip number one don't cheat on your camera so one day you're wandering through a shopping center walking through aimlessly and then out the corner of your eye something grabs your attention you see through a shop window this beautiful model and it has the curves all in the right places you're captivated immediately and you have to go in there so you walk confidently into the store and you're greeted by one of the shop attendants. Yes, sir, can I help you with anything? But you're not really interested in what they have to say. You just want to get a closer look at this wonderful model. Excuse me, sir, can I help you with anything? So you buy this camera and then you walk out the shop with a smile from ear to ear. You're over the moon, you've got yourself a new camera and then a whole journey lies ahead of you. The world of photography. So a year goes by and you spend a bit of time with your camera going out taking photos and then suddenly you start to lose interest but why is this? It's because you start looking in new photography magazines and in new stores and they're offering the new slimmer more curvy model. The problem with this is it's more expensive and do you really need it? I mean how familiar are you with the model that you've got already? Here's a question for you. Do you know what ISO you can shoot up to on your camera before getting too much noise and artifacts in the image? So my first tip today is get familiar with what you've already got. You may not need to trade it in at all. And if you do have some extra money, don't think about spending it on a camera. Get something that's gonna really make a difference, like a new lens. Tip number two, become a chauffeur. How many times have you been driving down the road only to see out of your car window beautiful dramatic foreboding clouds which are just created in this absolutely gorgeous atmosphere or alternatively even sun rays bursting through the clouds lighting up parts of the landscape below but you just had to carry on driving right because you didn't have your camera with you did you and i know this because i've done it many times myself the crazy thing is though, how easy is it just to, I don't know, charge the batteries for the camera the night before and then just chuck them in your bag? It's like, all your stuff's probably in your camera bag anyway and if it isn't, it's a three, four minute job. Get it all in there, get it ready and then take it with you the following day. So from now on, be the chauffeur. Take your camera with you everywhere. Never miss out on an opportunity. Never be that person that says, if only I had my camera. Tip number three, don't snooze the snooze button. Countless times in the past I have missed beautiful mornings because I started by hitting the snooze button once and then it was followed up by an extra 15 hits, let's say. Eventually I rise from the dead, open up the curtains to see that the sun has already woke up before me. My advice to you is to switch off the snooze button completely or smash it with a hammer. Whatever you need to do, make sure that snooze button is never on again. And in fact, take this a step further. What I do is I now put my alarm clock over the other side of the room. So I have no choice. I've got to get out of bed. Tip number four, become a geek. Let's face it, the world is becoming more techy. In fact, it already has. And this includes photography. You've probably found that there's so many more techy things that you can do with your camera than you could about 10 years back. But this also includes things like apps. There are three regular apps, for instance, which I use, and one of them is called Sun Surveyor. This is a great all-round photography app which lets you get a better insight into sunrise and sunset times, the kind of land that you're going to be shooting, and a whole host of other features which can really come in handy as a photographer. Also, I like to use two other apps, one for tides, to make sure I know certain tide times if I'm shooting seascapes, and also one for the peaks, which if I'm visiting somewhere like the Lake District, then it's great to know what kind of weather conditions I'm gonna be having all the way up in the peaks. Tip number five is have fun and be safe. Now, probably if you're watching this video, you like photography, and when you're doing photography, you're having fun, right? But it's also important to stay safe. 
And I'm not just talking about things like the right boots to make sure you don't fall down a hill, or the right weather to make sure that you're protected and your gear is protected. I'm more talking about the most important asset, which is your photos. Now sometimes gear can fail, and if it fails, it can really ruin not just your day, but all of the hard work that you've put in to getting these photos. In fact, I had a friend recently who had a corrupt hard drive and because he hadn't backed up his photos, he's lost all his photos and I really feel sorry for him because he put so much time and effort into getting them in the first place. So why not back up your photos? It's simple, get an external hard drive like this and also take it that step further. There's so many different cloud storage systems now which you can choose from, all offering really good solutions. You can get free packages up to a certain amount of data, or you can take it that step further, and then you can pay a small monthly subscription to places like Dropbox, Google Drive, and Amazon, and then you can get all of your photos protected in the cloud. Tip number six is longer is not always better. Now I know there might be a few people watching this video that would disagree with that statement. But what I'm talking about is long exposure. This is one of my favorite forms of landscape photography and one of the ones that I do the most. Now one of my favorite things to capture subjects is waterfalls. And there's nothing better than doing a nice long exposure on one of your waterfall photos. But increasingly, I've started to see photos which have had long exposures, let's say too long. So for instance, they've got no detail in the water whatsoever, and it's just like a bit of a blurry mess. Now of course, if this is the look you're going for, that's fine because it's down to creative and artistic personal preference. But a lot of times it's a lot nicer to kind of, let's bring the exposure time down a little bit and still capture some details in the water. For instance, I've done this myself. Take a look at my first image here from a place called Pistol Radar in Wales. As you can see in this picture, I've completely lost all detail in the water. And this really you know, nice image that could be really beautiful is actually ruined by this really blurry mess which you can see in the water. And then I've got two other examples which are exposures which are a little bit shorter. And because of that, it's creating more detail in the water. You've still got that lovely smooth blurry look, but you've also got the detail of the water as well. So when you're taking a long exposure, it's always worth keeping in your mind that longer is not always better. Now please remember to leave some comments below letting me know tips that you may have to share with the community. This is everyone that watches the video. And this is not just helping me learn, it's also helping the others learn as well. So it's kind of us all helping each other out. I hope you've enjoyed today's video guys. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be first in line for new video releases. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for continuing to support my channel and make my family proud of me. And whatever you do today, guys, I hope you have a great time and I'll see you again next video.